Good evening. Tonight is Thursday night, March 11th, 2021. Welcome to Mining the Riches of the Parsha. I am so happy that you're here and I am so grateful to be with you tonight. I am guilty, however, of bait and switch because what I prepared tonight is not about this week's Parsha. It is about preparing for Pesach. However, I will direct you to several times this week. I spoke about this week's Parsha in the morning at the 10 to 9 uh, um, program that we have every morning. And um, I invite you to listen. It is an extremely important Parsha, a very deep Parsha. And uh, hopefully uh, there's something to be gained by the insights that we shared. So I invite you to check that out. It's all on YouTube. <clears throat> Just as an announcement, I want to remind everyone that starting a week from tonight, so that's March 18th, we will switch to 8 p.m., not 7, but 8 p.m. We will stay at 8 p.m. through April 22nd, and then April 29th, we'll be back at 7 p.m. Also, I want to announce that the class that is scheduled for Thursday night, March 25th, which is right before Pesach, we are not going to have that class. It's going to move one night earlier. So Wednesday night, March 24th, also at 8 p.m., that will be um, in place of uh, the Shabbos HaGadol Drasha, the annual uh, presentation that I make before Pesach. That will take place Wednesday night, March 24th at 8 p.m. I hope that you'll join us. On the one hand, Pesach this year will not have the chaos of last year. On the other hand, after a year of COVID, there is still great uncertainty. We are tired we are anxious, though hopefully we're starting to be a little bit optimistic as more of us are vaccinated. I want to help you as much as I can this year, this Pesach, hoping that it will be for you a calm, inspiring, and enjoyable Pesach. And I plan to speak about many different aspects of preparing for Pesach, the themes of Pesach, enjoying the Seder, appreciating it, observing Pesach. There will be classes, emails over the next two weeks, and I encourage you and invite you to participate in all of them. Tonight <coughs> is a little bit different. I want to, first of all, I always want to encourage you, any questions you have, any suggestions, anything that you would like to see covered, please let me know. But tonight especially, I'm going to leave time for questions. So what I'll ask you to do, if you'll put any questions you have in the chat, and then when I finish the first part of what I'd like to discuss, I will try to address all of the questions to the best of my ability, and any questions that you have on the subject that I'm planning to discuss tonight or any other aspect of Pesach, tonight is a night to ask any questions that you want, and I hope that you will avail yourself of that opportunity, and we'll discuss that later. Tonight, I want to focus on one aspect of Pesach this year that will affect your planning which is why I'm talking about it two weeks in advance. And that is, this year, the first Seder is on Saturday night, Motzai Shabbat, at the end of Shabbat. The last time this happened was 13 years ago. <clears throat> the search for Chametz will take place on Thursday night, March 25th, starting at 7.45 p.m. <clears throat> By that time, 
your home, your car, your office should be cleaned and ready for Pesach. I sent out an email earlier this week outlining what I'm going to be discussing tonight. If you did not receive it and would like to, just let me know and I'll be happy to send it to you. But tonight I want to explain what the issues are and how I arrived at the conclusions that I included in that email. Because what I'm going to discuss tonight about how to deal with Pesach starting on Saturday night, you will hear differing advice. In fact, <laughs> most of the guidelines that you will follow will not be what I'm going to say tonight. To be perfectly honest with you, <clears throat> I've seen the guidelines from quite a number of rabbis and synagogues. I have not seen anybody <laughs> write and suggest what I am going to suggest to you tonight. Nonetheless, after reading everybody else's opinion and thoroughly researching the issues, I still prefer my approach, which I will share with you. My goal is to provide the best, simplest, and most kosher options for this year. Now, the challenges this year relate to two areas. The first is, in addition to not being allowed to eat chametz, any leavened product on Pesach, we're also not allowed to own it. So every year we arrange to sell our chametz to a non-Jewish person. We do that before Pesach and then after Pesach we buy it back. It is a totally legal and valid sale so that we do not own that chametz during Pesach. This year, like in previous years, you can arrange to sell your chametz with Rabbi Alex, and you can arrange it in several different ways, but like last year, only remotely. We are not doing any in-person arranging of selling chametz. However, I have placed the instructions to arrange to sell your chametz on our website, on our Facebook page, and in our emails. I've already sent one, you'll get another tomorrow. <clears throat> There'll be plenty more. And that arranging of selling your chametz with Rabbi Alex, that must take place by Thursday night, March 25th, 7 p.m. <clears throat> Here's the issue. Normally, we sell the chametz to the non-Jewish person on Erev Pesach, the eve of Pesach, in the morning, just before the time that it becomes prohibited to eat chametz, because the prohibition against eating chametz starts before Pesach starts. This year, it's 10.26 a.m. So, <clears throat> the problem is, normally we do the sale on Erev Pesach, but this year, Erev Pesach, the eve of Pesach, is Shabbos. We're not allowed to sell. We're not allowed to engage in commerce. Therefore, the actual sale of chametz to the non-Jewish person will take place on Friday morning. Everybody does that. That's universal. But here's the problem. Since technically we could continue to eat chametz until Saturday morning at 10.26 a.m., that's the actual time that the prohibition of chametz begins on Saturday morning. But when does the sale take effect? If we sold the chametz to the non-Jewish person on Friday morning, how can we continue to eat it 
Friday afternoon and Friday night and Saturday morning, we're eating food that doesn't belong to us. That's called stealing. So, so when does the sale take effect? <clears throat> there are several different solutions to this problem. What I'm going to share with you is, in my opinion, the easiest, simplest, best, and most kosher option, which nobody else is telling people to do, but I'm suggesting it to you. The sale of chametz takes effect on Friday morning at 10.26 a.m. By that time, no more chametz. That's it. We're kosher for Pesach. From that moment, we're not eating chametz. We're not using regular dishes. Only Pesach food, only Passover dishes until Pesach ends. On Friday, before 11.42 a.m., we destroy the chametz, the 10 pieces that we had found the night before when we were searching for chametz. We destroy that chametz and we say kol chamira, which is the paragraph where we relinquish ownership of any little pieces of chametz that we don't know about. Like every year, but we say that Friday morning before 11.42 a.m. Now, with this approach, yes, it is true. You have one extra day of kosher for Pesach food. That's true. But this approach is much simpler than all the other alternatives. And it is much more halakhically correct. Following this path makes everything much more calm and enjoyable. And this is what I plan to do. That's the first area. The second question that comes up relates to the following issue. On Shabbos, every Shabbos, there is a mitzvah. We have a mitzvah to have three meals. Friday night, Shabbos day, and then Shalosh Sudot, the third Shabbos meal, late in the afternoon, early evening of Shabbos. And we are supposed to wash and make hamotzi for each one of these three meals. That's the obligation to honor and enjoy the Shabbos. The question is, on this Shabbos, which is the eve of Pesach, what do we use to make hamotzi at the beginning of the meal? <clears throat> We can't use matzah because there is a prohibition against eating matzah on the day before Pesach. Some people have the custom to prohibit matzah longer, either for two weeks or even four weeks before Pesach. But the actual law, the actual halacha, requires not eating matzah on the eve of Pesach, the day before. And the reason for that is when we get to the Seder on Saturday night this year and we're about to take our first bite of matzah, it should be something that we're looking forward to, that we should relish it, that we should enjoy it. And so our sages prohibited us from eating matzah the day before because, you know, then it's like we're used to it or we're tired of it already. But we want people to be enthusiastic. And this, by the way, is a very important lesson. Our sages are not only concerned that we should perform the mitzvot, but they are concerned that we should enjoy them, that we should be enthusiastic about them. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote, to fulfill a mitzvah means to fill it with meaning. So in order to enhance the quality of the act of eating matzah on Saturday night at the first Seder, 
we withhold ourselves from eating matzah beforehand. So it's something that we look forward to. Okay, so we cannot use matzah to make hamotzi at any of the three Shabbos meals. Matzah's out. We cannot have bread, challah, because we stopped eating all chametz Friday morning, 10, 26 a.m. So there's no challah because it's all kosher for Pesach food. And even if you're not going to listen to me, the actual prohibition of eating challah or any chametz is Saturday morning, Shabbos morning at 10, 26 a.m. So for whatever Shabbos meals they're going to be after 10, 26 a.m. on Saturday on Shabbos, we're not, we're not allowed to eat bread. So we can yet, cannot use challah for hamotzi. But we can use Passover egg matzah. Now, there are many misconceptions and misunderstandings about this product called egg matzah. So allow me to take a moment to clarify because this will be very important to what we're going to discuss. Our rabbis in the Talmud tell us <clears throat> that if you mix flour and water with nothing else in it, and from the time those two ingredients meet, you get it into the oven before 18 minutes have passed, that product will be matzah. It will not have time to begin to rise. And that's matzah. That's matzah. Our rabbis say though, what if you use any liquid other than water? What if you use eggs? What if you use apple juice? What if you use wine? How long does it take if you mix apple juice and flour? How long does it take to start to leaven to know how quickly you have to get into the oven? Our rabbis say, we don't know. We don't know. Maybe it's even longer than 18 minutes. Or maybe it's shorter than 18 minutes. And the problem is that's a risk. That's a doubt about possibly, God forbid, violating the prohibition of eating chametz on Pesach. It's such a serious prohibition. Even to take a chance, if we're not certain that this product is okay, we're not allowed to use it. That's what egg matzah is. So the term is actually not an accurate term. In the Talmud, the term is matzah ashira, which would translate more precisely as matzah that is enriched or matzah that has added ingredients. It's flour with something else besides water. As I said, could be eggs. That's the term egg matzah. Today, most egg matzah is made with apple juice. It will still say kosher for Passover on the box. And I realize that that can be very confusing. But the fact is, it is prohibited for us to eat egg matzah on Pesach. <clears throat> In former times, people would rely on eating egg matzah if someone was sick. And they were not able, physically able to eat matzah, we would rely for a sick person that they could have egg matzah. Because it's a doubt as to whether it is kosher for Pesach or not. If a person is sick, God forbid, seriously sick, we would allow them. But practically speaking, that's not relevant today. Practically speaking, if a person, God forbid, is sick, there are other ways to find nutrition that do not take the chance of violating the prohibition of chametz. So practically speaking, egg matzah, even though it says kosher for Passover in the box, is prohibited for us to eat on Pesach. <clears throat> However, it is not prohibited for us to eat it on Arab Pesach, the day before Pesach. 
because the only prohibition of matzah on the day before Pesach is matzah that you could use at the Seder. We don't want you to eat on the day before what you are going to eat that night at the Seder. But egg matzah, you cannot eat at the Seder. It's not kosher for Pesach. And since you cannot eat it at the Seder, it is permitted to eat it the day before. And because it is a questionable status, we're not allowed to eat it on Pesach, but we are allowed to own it. It is not included in our sale of chametz. It's okay if it remains in our possession. With the caveat that by Saturday morning, Shabbos morning, 1026 a.m., when the actual prohibition of eating chametz applies, we're also not allowed to eat egg matzah because it might be chametz. However, it is not a problem if egg matzah touches our Passover dishes, for example, on Friday night or any time before Pesach starts. We just have to wash it off, and we're good to go. So, if we put all that together, here's how it unfolds. There's a meal Friday night, there's a meal Shabbos morning, and there's a meal Shabbos afternoon. Let's go through one at a time. Friday night, my recommendation, make hamotzi on egg matzah. Remember, you sold all your chametz. You were kosher for Pesach from Friday morning, 1026 a.m. There's no chametz. You're using Passover dishes, Passover food, and you're allowed to make hamotzi on egg matzah Friday night. That's number one. Number two, Shabbos morning. Well, you use egg matzah to make hamotzi. But... You must finish eating egg matzah by 10.26 a.m. on Shabbos morning. For that reason, our shul and most shuls will have their minion on Shabbos morning very early. At a daf, our minion will be at 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. means that there'll be time to come home from shul eat a Shabbos meal, brunch, or even a Pesach cholent, maybe, make hamotzi on egg matzah, and finish eating egg matzah and put it away by 10.26 a.m. You can continue eating Pesach food after that, as long as it's not chametz, as long as it's not egg matzah, and as long as it's not real matzah. But that Pesach Cholent, you can still eat it. Or anything else you want to eat. The real problem is the third Shabbos meal. Shalosh Su'udot. Now, ideally, Shalosh Su'udot, the third Shabbos meal, should be eaten, ideally, in the afternoon of Shabbos. Ideally, it should be a meal where we make hamotzi. Many of us are not careful to make hamotzi and to eat bread during the year every Shabbos on Shabbos afternoon, but we should be. We should be. And ideally, we're not allowed to eat egg matzah on Shabbos afternoon. So it is not possible to ideally fulfill the mitzvah of the third Shabbos meal, Shalosh Sudot, on this Shabbos. Because we're not allowed to eat chametz, we're not allowed to eat matzah, and we're not allowed to eat egg matzah. So there is no way to make hamotzi at that meal. The best solution that is available 
is to fulfill the third Shabbos meal with other foods. Any food for which the bracha is shahakol or ha'etz, so fruit. You could have dairy like uh, cheese, for example. You could have um, meat. You could have fish, gefilte fish. You could even have a Pesach chalot. Not hamotzi and not mizonos. No cake, no cookies, no bread, no challah, no matzah, no egg matzah. The only thing to keep in mind is just make sure whatever eating you do for the third Shabbos meal is not late in the day. It's earlier in the afternoon because we want people to come to the Seder with an appetite. You don't want to show up at the Seder and you're full from, from just finishing eating. Now, there's one more significant issue this year. On Shabbos, <clears throat> this applies every Shabbos. On Shabbos, we're not allowed to do any action that is a preparation for after Shabbos. This year, what that means is Shabbos ends at 8.01 when Pesach is about to begin. Now, 8.01, Shabbos is over. We want to start the Seder as soon as possible because we want to make sure that everyone stays awake. But on Shabbos afternoon, anytime on Shabbos, we're not allowed to do anything that prepares for the Seder. We're not allowed to set the table. We're not allowed to do anything until 8.01. But if we wait until 8.01 to start setting the table and preparing the, the, the Seder plate, we're not going to start the, the, the Seder until much later. Therefore, it is very important that all preparation for Shabbos and all preparation for Yom Tov, including the Seder, be finished before Shabbos starts on Friday. So that means on Friday, you should make the salt water and grate the horseradish and roast the shank bone and the egg and wash the romaine lettuce and make the charoses all of the preparations, if you have room in your home, you should set the table for the Seder if you have another place that you could eat the Shabbos meals at a different table, if you have that option. But all preparation for the Seder and for that Yom Tov should be finished before Shabbos begins on Friday. That way, on Shabbos, we will not do anything that prepares for Saturday night and we'll be able to start the Seder as soon as possible when Shabbos is over on Saturday night. These three issues together create an amazing opportunity. A true Shabbat Shalom, a Shabbos of peace and harmony. Because if you follow my suggestion, we will be able to enter Pesach and to come to the Seder rested, calm, filled with spiritual energy and physical energy to be able to enjoy the Seder as never before. We have the potential this year for the most meaningful and enjoyable Seder ever. I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Let me check the chat first. Can we do a shahakol on kosher for Passover tequila for the third meal? Yes. 
However, my suggestion would be to go easy on it because remember, we do have a Passover Seder to get through Saturday night. But a one shot should be okay. I want to, um, so the easiest thing is if you can put any questions you have in the chat, but also um, let me, um, if you want to unmute yourself and uh, uh, ask a question, you can do that. But let me start with the chat, with the chat first. So uh, a person who is alone, uh, must they put out 10 pieces of chametz to search for on Thursday night? The answer is yes. Kind of depressing. I hope not. Let me make this suggestion, which I've made before. First of all, the opportunity to connect with others during the search for chametz is completely open. Make it a Zoom chametz search. Be on the phone or on Zoom with relatives or friends. It's Thursday night. Make it into a game for grandchildren who are in another city who you can't be with. Where should I go to look for the chametz? Am I getting hotter? Or am I getting warmer? Make it into a fun game. We're actually trying to work on a program that we're going to offer on that Thursday night. Number two. Please remember what I've said, quoting Dr. Tversky. It is not true that we're alone. God is with us. And I promise you, Hashem will be there at that moment. You should not feel that you're alone. I recognize it is a challenge. And I recognize that it's easier for me to say it because I don't go through it myself personally. But I want to assure you, you are not alone. Hashem is with you. And what you are doing is the highest mitzvah possible to protect life and health of yourself and others by remaining apart. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, you got to watch out for the tequila on Thursday night. Yes, I would hold off on Thursday night from the tequila because you do have to search for comments. And by the way, <laughs> if you put out 10 pieces, but you only find nine, you're in big trouble. You're not going to sleep that night. So <laughs> hold off on the tequila for Thursday night. That's my suggestion. Um, okay, so the answer about egg matzah since we can't eat it, wouldn't it be sold and therefore unacceptable? The answer is no, but let me explain why. When we sell chametz to the non-Jewish person, <clears throat> remember, when you arrange it, you are not selling chametz. And you're not selling chametz to me, you're not selling it to Rabbi Alex, because, thank you, we have enough chametz, we're trying to get rid of ours, we're not interested in buying yours. You are appointing us as your agent to arrange the sale on your behalf with the non-Jewish person. When we meet with the non-Jewish person on Friday morning this year, we specify what it is that we are selling. We are selling chametz. We do not sell kitneos, for example. So even though we do not eat rice, Ashkenazim do not eat rice, and other legumes on Pesach, we don't sell it because there's no prohibition against owning kitneos. It's only prohibited for us to eat it. So we specify what it is that we sell and what it is that we do not. And that's the reason that your egg matzah is not being sold. It should be put away so that you don't, by mistake, come to eat it, but it is not included in the sale. Um, okay. Okay. For the Seder, is there a consensus whether Zoom Seder will be available? The answer is yes, there is a consensus. And the answer is no. Um, it is unfortunately not permissible, according to Halakha, to make use of an electrical um, 
uh, device uh, on Yom Tov, and there were no real considerations of this last year. There were people who are outside of the mainstream of the Orthodox world uh, who certainly consider it, and many who, who used it, and they should live and be well, and I bless them that they should uh, be healthy and safe and everything should go well. But in terms of what Jewish law says, it was clear last year, it's clear this year, and the consensus remains. Okay, so if you have egg matzah on Shabbos morning to make hamotzi, and you start to eat, you can continue to eat after 1026 for as long as you want. It's like any other meal. Um, as a general matter, if a person ate a meal, made a mozi and ate a meal, just random during the year, it is necessary to say the benching, Birkat Amazon, the grace after meals, within 72 minutes of finishing eating. That's the general rule. And that applies this year also. But as long as you finish the egg matzah, you make a mozi, you eat the egg matzah, and then you put it away by 1026, you can then continue the meal as long as you want. Is waxed dental floss permitted? Yes. Does anyone else have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself if you wish or to type it in the chat. I'm happy to take it either way. Of course. Um, egg matzah is prohibited. What about all the new, the new brands of matzah, like rye and uh, bran and, all, and whole wheat and all those that have you? So um, it depends what the label says. A lot of those products are actually a form of egg matzah, meaning if there is an ingredient besides flour and water, that's in the category of egg matzah. Some of them might be available as actual matzah. I'm not sure about that. So you have to look very carefully at the package. If you want, you can send me a photo of the package and I can give you my opinion. But if there are any ingredients besides flour and water, then it's in the category of egg matzah. Uh, can, what is the issue with eating gebrachs? Okay, gebrachs, uh, which is a Yiddish word that means broken, is a stringency that some people follow, which is that matzah that comes into contact with any liquid on Pesach may not be eaten. That would mean, for example, that if you have chicken soup, you cannot have matzah balls because matzah mixed together with matzah meal mixed together with um, oil and eggs, and then boiled in soup, that would be prohibited for someone who has the stringency of, of gebrachs. Or, for example, a cake that's made with matzah meal would be problematic for someone who is gebrachs. Someone who observes that stringency would use potato starch instead. That is a stringency that some people follow I do not follow that. Um, it is not necessary for a person to take that on, but if it is your custom, it's the right thing to keep your custom. So that's what Gabrox is. Can you eat Oreos this year? <sighs> yes, you can eat Oreos up until Friday at 10, 26 a.m. Before Friday, 10, 26 a.m., all the Oreos you want. Now, there's, there's Oreos that are kosher le Pesach now. They're not called Oreos. I think they're Crimeos or something. And Mashiach is around the corner. <laughs> Almost here. I, I have a, another question that maybe someone of course. here knows. Um, does anyone know specifically of a name brand of a cat food 
There's a whole list of them in the in the OU book and the Star Cave, but none of them are available in Canada. And I'm tired of reading all the labels trying to figure it out. Does anyone here maybe have a cat and know of a name brand? Let me just explain the issue while you're thinking if you know the answer to that, and I would appreciate that. So the issue is as follows. <clears throat> Cats with a C are not obligated to keep kosher. Cats with a K should keep kosher, but cats with a C do not have to keep kosher. Pets, animals do not have to keep kosher. However, on Pesach, not only may we not eat chametz, we may not benefit from it. And therefore, we may not, may, may not feed it to our pet. So the food that we serve to our pet can be treif, it can be shrimp and pork and all kinds of tray food, but it cannot be chametz. And therefore, it's necessary for each pet to make sure that the food is not chametz. There, as, as Pesha mentioned, there are lists of uh, acceptable uh, pet foods for each different pet, but if there is a problem, I do not know uh, the names of pet foods. If anyone knows, you can let, them know, let Pesha know. Um, but as, as far as I know, you would have to just look at the label and see if there's anything that's an actual chametz item. If the label does not contain something that is an actual chametz, one of the five grains, it would be permitted to use. Uh, Except for, you also have to be checking if, there are mixed, if there's a mixture of milk and meat in it at the same time. That's true, yes. So that so, makes it hard. You have to read everything. Yes, yes, people. yes. I don't know all these, you know, there's so many things that could be, you know, so that's what feel I'm free, thinking. feel free to send me a photo I'm and uh, feel free to send me a photo and I'll be glad to give you my opinion. Uh, just to, just to answer Yaakov's question. No, there is no change to the decision on string beans. Yeah. What about gluten? I'm sorry, what? So, okay, so this is a little bit of a complicated subject. I want to be very clear that I am not, do not consider me a source of any medical information because this can be a serious issue. There is available oat matzah and there is also available spelt matzah. Now, some people can eat one and not the other. And so... Those are two products that are available and that can be found kosher for Pesach. So whichever one of those works for you, um, uh, you can you can use. So I, I know that there are some people who um, cannot eat oats and others can. I'm not an expert on that issue. So spelt and oats are the two uh, alternatives. It's a really good idea that Miriam is sharing with everyone to uh, sing melodies and to remember past years. Uh, if one is alone on the Seder, Miriam, that's a wonderful idea. That's a great idea. What other questions are there? What can I help with? Okay, yes, Abby. It's better to have unflavored. It's probably not a problem. It's probably not a problem, but just stick with unflavored. It's, it's hard to find the unflavored one these days. I don't know why. But yes, uh, the, the, the flavorings are not really an issue. How would you like to get into perfumes and creams now? <laughs> um, I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be happy to. It's very simple. It's very simple. Um, things that are not meant to be eaten like uh, cosmetics, toiletries, are fine on Pesach. My personal practice is a product that has a significant ingredient that is actual chametz, I put that away for Pesach. That's my personal practice. I have a hand lotion that's made out of oats, so I, you know, I put that away and I use a different one. But from the point of view of Jewish law, 
if it is a toiletry, you're not eating it, but you're using it as a cosmetic or a toiletry, it is permitted. Wow, Janine. Um, that's amazing. It was amazing, Brother. Wow. To, to, to Jeanine is, is suggesting, especially for personal loan, but really the truth is everybody is supposed to do that, right? We say this is not gotta. Every person should see themselves as if they themselves are going out of Egypt. But Miriam is, but Janine is saying that to picture yourself as if you are in Egypt with all the Jews and you're going free that night. That's what we're all supposed to do. Um, please allow unmute. I did. Yes. You're welcome to unmute. Okay. Now, but, uh, as far as the uh, celiac disease, a lot of times oats are contaminated with wheat. So it's better to stay away from oats. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's good to have someone who actually knows what they're talking about <laughs> to answer a question. So, yes, so um, what, I would, what I would say is it is on Yom Tov, that is after Shabbos ends, we are only allowed to light a flame from an existing flame. And therefore, it is a very good idea before Shabbos starts to have a yard site candle, preferably one that lasts for uh, two days. And to light it before Shabbos starts, to have it lit, make sure it's in a very, very safe place with no chance of causing any harm. And that way on Saturday night, we can use that candle to light the candles for candle lighting for Friday night, for, for Saturday night. And then if we, we could even on Saturday night, light a second yard side candle to use for Sunday night. So, so it's got to be from an existing flame from before Shabbos. So there's no such thing as a time between two days. Correct. Correct. There's no, there's, there's no free period there. There's Shabbos, there's Pesach, and they're joined, they're joined at the hip. Rabbi? Yes. So yeah, I, so you have to look at the ingredients. I'm not sure there are different types. The ingredients are, the ingredients are wheat, whole wheat flour and bran, 10% and, and water. But is there a kosher for Pesach symbol? Yes, yeah, kosher. Kosher for Pesach, So do me a favor, send me a photo. I, I can't see it. Send me a photo and I'll send you an answer. Okay, thank you, Robert. Send me a photo. Okay, I want to answer Donna's questions here. So in the directions that I sent, I mentioned you should finish eating on Shabbos afternoon by 4.30. Does that mean that after 4.30, one cannot eat anything until the Seder? No, that's not what it means. A person could have something small, but you should limit the amount that you eat after 4.30. Not a full meal, but if you want a drink of water, if you want a small snack, one last bit of Pesach Cholent uh, before Shabbos is over, that would be okay. But uh, the third Shabbos meal should preferably be before about 4.30. How do we make Havdalah? Excellent question. It's right there in the Haggadah. It is woven into the Kiddush. So, in your Haggadah, in the instructions for saying Kiddush, it includes the parts for Havdalah that we say on that Saturday night. You'll find it in every Haggadah. Havdalah is in the Haggadah, it's part of Kiddush. What else, my friends? Anything else? 
Okay, so I want to be clear. I, I'm, I'm not closing up shop. Uh, uh, I want to wish everyone a wonderful night and a very happy Passover. I'm available at any time. Call, email. If you have suggestions about what would be helpful to you in preparing, um, please let me know. I would love to. I would love to know that. I see in the Ricky is asking, do we light a Havdalah candle? No, we look at the existing light. We use the existing uh, Yom Tov candles that we have lit for, for Yom Tov. That's what we do for Abdullah on Saturday night. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. I look forward to seeing you soon. And please keep the questions coming.